Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, we have the latest on a quadruple shooting that has left two people dead. Plus, more than half the country dealing dangerously high temperatures, while other areas are dealing with strong and destructive storms. And here at home, it will not be a surprise to you that humidity is our dangerous factor here, particularly in the afternoon. Mike Goes Change will get us updated on some dangerous heat and disease. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, August 12th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a great week so far. And yeah, those afternoons pretty hot. Saw some clouds building late in the day yesterday, Mike. I was hoping for a stray shower or so, but I had that face in the end. Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't get your hopes up. Now, the next couple of days, yeah, along the coastal plain, one or two of those showers, a couple more tomorrow. You know, rain chances will start to go up a little bit toward the end of the weekend. Not fantastic rain, but at least a couple of them out there. So there's a little bit of hope. And yeah, the humidity this morning, especially, I mean, it is up there. We've got a hint of fog right now. Casterville, New Braunfels, Pleasanton. Like yesterday, we started off pretty good. And then, you know, as we approached sunrise, the fog started to thicken up quite a bit. 79 right now, 77 in Pleasanton, 76 Seguin. And these numbers are up somewhat from yesterday. Dew point, look at that, 79 in Castroville. I mean, that's, again, it's steam bath kind of weather down there. So we have heat index readings, uh, 83 Stinson, 82 at the airport, and 84 in Castroville. It's going to be another hot one. Mold is on the uh, moderate side, a little bit of pigweed and fall elm. If you can cut back on energy, use that would be helpful today and help out your electric bill 96 high temperature but again the heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds later on today subtle changes best way to put it as we head in toward the next couple of days as well as the weekend including some rain chances don't get really excited about it but some folks will see a little bit of rain details coming up in just a couple of minutes mark thank you mike we have details this morning about a deadly shooting involving four people just west of downtown San Antonio. It happened before 10 o'clock last night in the 400 block of Hazel, just east of Zarzamora. According to San Antonio police, after a woman crashed her vehicle into a parked car, three people tried to check to see if she was okay. And that's when police say she got out of her car and started shooting. A man in his 50s was pronounced dead at the scene while a woman and teenager were taken to a hospital in critical condition. Police say the, during the incident, a neighbor across the street saw what was happening, pulled out a gun, and fired multiple times at the suspect, killing her. Police are still investigating. Also this morning, San Antonio police investigating an apparent road rage shooting between drivers that happened on a busy roadway. This started on East Houston and Loop 410 around 730 last night. Police say one driver shot at another in a black Cadillac. That victim was hit in the shoulder, but still managed to follow the suspect to a gas station near Pecan Valley and Goliad. That's where police say the suspect was taken into custody. A weapon was also found. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. More than 1,300 cases of coronavirus continue to pop up each day in Bear County, according to the seven day average in our hospitals. Uh, 1,284 COVID patients are being treated. 331 patients are in ICU. 194 are on ventilators. State Health Department is deploying 2,500 medical personnel to help in hospitals. The Food and Drug Administration is expected to approve a booster shot for immunocompromised people before the end of this week. This will end up being a third shot for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which are two doses each. The FDA has not officially commented on the issue. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that more than 98% of Americans live in areas that are considered to have high or substantial risk of community transmission of the virus. This morning, about 200 million Americans are facing extreme heat. Some areas that are usually in the 70s will be over 100. And for millions of others, strong storms are leaving behind a trail of destruction. ABC's Mono Kassar Abdi has details. This morning from Seattle. Woody, woody hot. To Philadelphia. Mucho caliente hoy. More than half the country is sweltering as dangerously high temperatures sweep the nation feel like temperatures topping 100 from coast to coast. You know, it's definitely going to get worse. In Minnesota, a toddler died and his twin brother was hospitalized after they accidentally locked themselves inside a car. The third hot car death in the country this week. In Oregon, Portland could hit 107 degrees today, 15 degrees higher than average. 
In Washington state, where nearly 100 people died in a record heat wave earlier this summer, nursing homes are bracing once again. Every two hours, we made sure that uh, the residents had access to water fountains that we put out for them. The scorching temperatures also helping fuel at least a dozen major fires across California. Firefighters spread thin. I'm worried. I have to say, I'm honestly, I'm worried. State regulators further tightening restrictions on water usage. In wine country, some vineyards are now cut off from using precious resources to water their crops. I've been a winemaker for 44 years. First time I've seen such a critical situation in my career. All this coming as erratic weather wreaks havoc in parts of the Midwest. At least three possible tornadoes caught on camera in Wisconsin. The outbreak damaging trees and ripping up signs. And in the east, excessive heat and severe storms bringing down this tree near Pittsburgh, killing the driver of that car. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. At least 13 people are dead after a landslide in northern India. Rocks and heavy boulders crashed onto a highway late yesterday, leaving a passenger bus and several other vehicles trapped under that debris. More than 20 people are still missing, according to police, and search and rescue teams are continuing to search through that rubble. Attorneys are still trying to reach the parents of more than 300 migrant children separated at the U.S.-Mexico border. The families were split under the Trump administration's so-called zero-tolerance policy. The Biden administration is, says it's committed to helping identify and reunite them as part of a family reunification task force. According to a federal court filing, the parents of 31 other children have been found since June. And time now is 436 and it's about 78 degrees out there. So ahead on GMSA, Apple products are becoming more susceptible to cyber attacks. Tax will tell you how to avoid them. Also next, House Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond reacting to not being hired by several NBA teams this summer. And outside with live cam. Hang in there, folks. We'll get through the heat and the day together. You're watching GMSA. We are just getting started and we'll be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Great news for Cowboys fans. Dak Prescott back at practice throwing the ball. He's not a full throttle after suffering a muscle strain in his throwing shoulder. Head coach Mike McCarthy told us how the team will progress with their star quarterback. I think like anything, I, I think it's only natural when, when you shut a quarterback down completely, you know, throwing, then there's a process where you got to build him back up. So. Uh, so we'll continue to go through that regiment uh, today. So he'll do a little more throwing today than he did yesterday. Everything's good. Yeah, I talked to him this morning, so he's uh, feeling good and just wants to keep progressing. Dak is not scheduled to play in the Cowboys' next preseason game against Arizona Friday night at 9 p.m. Their target is the third preseason game right now. Houston Texans kick off their preseason Saturday night when they travel to take on the Green Bay Packers with Deshaun Watson's tenure very much up in the air. It appears that first rounder uh, quarterback Davis Mills will see some play time for the first time as a Texan. I'm just happy if I get to play on Saturday, obviously, kind of go out there and show what I can do. Um, I'll have really talented players around me on, on the same team that I'm looking forward to going on there and playing with, and I'm just looking, looking forward to having a lot of fun. Becky Hammond is saying, please don't hire me to check a box. Hire me because of my skill sets and coaching. That's what she said in her words to the Associated Press during a telephone interview. It's after the Spurs assistant was passed over for more than one coaching vacancy this offseason. Hammond admits there are only 30 NBA jobs that are very difficult to get. Many thought she would be the next head coach in Portland until she lost out to John Chauncey Billups. If you follow baseball, much better night last night for our missions. After failing to score a run Tuesday night and only recording three hits, missions bounced back with a big win against the Rockhounds. Missions managed to drive in seven runs early in the game. That led to a 13-4 victory over Midland. With the win, San Antonio falls to 39-46 and on the season. The series continues tonight out at Nelson Wolf Stadium starting at 7 o'clock. That's much better. Much better. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Time now is 441 and about 78 degrees out there. So ahead, the steps you might want to take to make sure your MacBook and your iPhones are safe. Also next, new signs of a potential slowdown for air travel thanks to the new surge in COVID cases. 
And welcome back. It's about 444. Some airlines are starting to see an impact from the spread of the Delta variant on air travel. ABC's Gia Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, after months of soaring passenger numbers during the pandemic, New signs of a potential slowdown amid a new surge in COVID cases. The TSA reporting it screened the lowest number of people in almost two months on Tuesday. And Southwest Airlines saying this week it's seeing more cancellations now, blaming the spread of the Delta variant. Industry-wide, experts say demand is flatlining for domestic flights and dropping for international. Demand for searches for international flights is down about 12% since uh, mid-July. And hesitation to travel seems to be growing. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know before booking your next trip, including the latest on airline cancellation policies. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. You know, for a long time, Apple's reputation was that its products were untouchable when it came to cyber threats and malware because they were just too tough to hack. But now new attacks against Apple products are stirring concern. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on what you can do to keep your devices safe. Mark Doherty is a longtime Apple guy. I've always thought Apple products were safer. That's why I went with them to begin with. But tech experts say that all connected tech carry some level of risk. In fact, during the past year, Apple has rolled out a slew of software updates to fix flaws and even some critical vulnerabilities, including at least one that could have left Apple users susceptible to dangerous malware had the patch not been installed. Don't ignore operating system and app updates. This is where known security flaws are fixed, but it's up to you to install them. To be sure your iPhone or iPad is up to date, go to Settings, General, Software Update. On a Mac computer, go to Launchpad, System Preferences, Software Update. And if your device isn't getting OS updates because it's too old, it's time to replace it. One of the more common ways hackers get the goods is through phishing, so be careful what you click. Most of the time, cyber criminals can only get access to your device if you give them a way in, say by clicking on a malicious link, or an attachment in an email, or even a social media post. And if you thought Apple products don't need antivirus software, think again. Consumer Reports recommends AVG antivirus for Mac. It's free. On your iPhone, antivirus software can do things like block malicious websites, calls, and texts. But because of Apple's security restrictions, antivirus software can't scan iPhones for viruses. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. No longer untouchable. Nope, nope, everybody has to be careful. I was looking at the picture behind Mike, and I know our friend Taylor always uh, kind of aims towards Woodlawn Lake. Is this another shot? I'm assuming it is. He uh, posted a couple of them on there. Got another one to show later on. Very nice. Beautiful picture, but yeah, I mean, because just all the different angles and mm -hmm. this, this Woodlawn Lake, it, you know, a hundred different places it could be just about. But yeah, another fantastic shot of the uh, sunset last night. Couple of clouds hanging around here. Thank you very much for the uh, the picture. And we have our morning clouds hanging on in. Of course, the Perseid meteor shower is going on right now, but you got to catch it, obviously out away from the city lights and then before all these morning clouds decide to uh, slide on in here. So we'll keep these around for the next couple of hours and the humidity is really, really high. It's even higher than what it was yesterday and we just continue with this flow coming in here off the southeast. We'll see a bit of a drop in the uh, dew points later on this afternoon. Our usual kind of 24 hour cycle we go through humidity comes back up tomorrow morning. And we'll be dropping down a little bit in the afternoon satellite picture and didn't have much going on. Just these low clouds. You can see that little darker shade of gray kind of sliding on in there. Some of these low clouds down along the coast. There are a few of these showers trying to pop up and there will be a few sea breeze showers moving inland. So that's the chance of rain just pretty much confined down here to the southeast and a couple of more are going to try and slide on in here tomorrow as well as going into the weekend. So you know, one or two, we got a mention of it in the forecast. And that's what the uh, computer models are indicating. All of this pretty much along the coastal plain today. And then tomorrow, a couple more, a couple of extra clouds around here uh, throughout the day. You know, one of these sneak in here a little bit further to the northwest. And Saturday, a slightly better chance. We're only talking like 
from 10% up to 20% chance of rain. So don't get really excited about the rain chances, but at least a few more around here on Saturday and then again on Sunday as well. And the reason for it, very unusual pattern for summertime because usually this high is just plunked down on top of us, sitting in place that's locked in there, puts a lid on any sort of uh, shower development and also pushes down in the atmosphere and really help, tends to heat things up. Now we are at pretty much normal temperatures right now as far as high temperatures are concerned. The, um, the pattern is not going to change that much over the next couple of days. We don't really have a real strong high in place and then going into the latter part of the weekend. Once again, the high sort of eases up a little bit and it opens this up. It's not as though there's a really good weather system coming in here, but we just have the opportunity for a couple of those showers. There's the uh, what's now tropical depression Fred off to the east of us. That's kind of weakened a little bit. It was moving over some of the land there in the, uh, the Caribbean and then even going into next week. Again, high is not sitting right on top of us, so we'll just keep the the chance for a stray shower or two around even going into the middle part of next week. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. Heard this forecast before yesterday and the day before that 96. It'll feel like it's well up into the hundreds uh, later on today and tomorrow. Subtle changes degree or two down uh, one or two extra clouds around here. A stray shower to again the thing to take away from this is don't get really excited about rain chances, but there'll be a, a few of them out there and temperatures will be down a notch or so going into the especially the latter part of the weekend. Yeah, we can handle that. We don't have to cancel plans no, this weekend. No, no, won't have to cancel plans this weekend. Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 451, about 78 degrees. And coming up next, we are just hours away from Jennifer Hudson's debut as Aretha Franklin. We're going to hear from Hudson on what she thinks of this iconic role. Take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 6, 2, 8, Fireball 0. Daily 4 numbers, 3, 2, 6, 6, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 4, 11, 13, 20, 35. And Lotto, Texas, 10, 20, 23, 38, 41, 42. Your Powerball numbers, 12, 18, 20, 29, 30. Powerball 16, Power Play 3. Good luck. Got the latest on the new Aretha Franklin film, plus Justin Bieber getting a lot of praise for an upcoming from an upcoming award show. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We're just hours away from Jennifer Hudson's debut as Aretha Franklin in the film Respect. Many know that Hudson was Franklin's handpicked choice to play her in the movie, and Hudson says that's a lot of pressure. Like it's exciting. But it, it gives me anxiety at the same time. Like, oh God, what did I do? What's happening? Is she gonna be? Is, will she be happy? I don't know. It's a lot of emotions, but I guess because it's it's personal to me, you know. Respect premieres this weekend only in theaters. Nothing says dedication like breaking your back for your new TV show. Literally, Stephen Amell stars in the new wrestling drama Heels, and he tells me he actually broke his back while filming season one. I had to take a little bit of time off work, but I was very fortunate and lucky that that it was an injury that sounds scary, but didn't um, you know didn't require surgery, just sort of healed on its own, and um, good to go. That Heels was created by Loki showrunner Michael Waldron. It debuts Sunday night on Stars. Justin Bieber tops the list of nominees for this year's MTV Video Music Awards, leading seven nominations, including a nod for Artist of the Year, where he's up against six-time nominee Megan Thee Stallion, among others. The VMAs will air live from Brooklyn, September 12th. And happy birthday to actress Yvette Nicole Brown. The community star is 50 today, while rapper Sir Mix-a-Lot is 58. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, as more kids go back to school today, the U.S. is now averaging more than 110,000 new COVID cases a day. We're getting a better look at Samsung's newest foldable smartphones now that they have slightly better price points. Many homeowners are looking at ways to freshen up their homes after spending so much time inside over the past year. Just ahead on GMSA, we're going to show you some tips for making sure your home painting project goes smoothly. Let's check Trans Guide right now. We've got a few cars on the roads there at 2D1 and 410 on the north side. Steven is in studio. We'll check in with him coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning as more students go back to school today. Some districts are leaving the option to wear masks up to students and parents. 
and the FDA, FDA revealing new information about a third booster shot for the amino compromised. Outside with live cam, humidity is a factor. We're also on the lookout for a little bit of fog this morning. We'll check in with Mike in a moment. It is Thursday the 12th. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great week so far. Uh, those afternoons warming up quite a bit. I mean, you really need the shade. You do. Uh, beautiful skies, but it is definitely uh, feeling very much like almost mid-August out there, Mike. Yep. Uh, temperatures are right about, you know, within a degree or so of what you would expect this time of year. And of course, we do have the humidity out there. So yeah, you just gotta you know, really take it easy. Lots of water, lots of shade, if at all possible. 79 degrees right now. The average low temperature is 75. We've actually started to uh, decline and we've peaked as far as the average low temperature and so that's starting to uh, go down slightly. Uh, dew points at 74 which means yeah there's a bunch of humidity out there right now. 96 high temperature. The you know today is almost identical to yesterday as well as the day before that. We got clouds this morning you know maybe a hint of fog here and there. Temperatures up in the mid 90s. Heat index readings well up into the hundreds. The aquifer dropped down six tenths of a foot and allergens mold is still uh, kind of hanging in there on the moderate side, a little bit of pigweed and fall elm. And uh, later on today, of course, if you can just kind of turn down the uh, turn down the dial just slightly. So hopefully you can lower your energy usage by, uh, you know, the heat of the afternoon because it just you know, overworks sometimes the air conditioner and maybe save a couple of bucks on your uh, electric bill as well. Mostly cloudy, humid this morning and plenty of sunshine again. Heat index is going to be into the low hundreds later on today. Tomorrow, a shower or two. I say that with hesitancy because there are going to be very, very few and far between a bit lower in temperatures, a degree or two. That's what we're, you know, the most we're talking about. And over the weekend, low to mid 90s, so down on two, three degrees. A couple of more showers here. Don't get really, really excited about rain chances, although there obviously will be a few of them out there and maybe even going into next week, the small chance for some rain. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big on the highways and byways? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, you know, we just saw uh, take a look at the shot at trans guy. There were some flashing lights that we saw out there just a few moments ago, but they looks like it has whatever was going on at there has since cleared. Now our friends at trans guide uh, brought up the shot for us, but we want to bring you to the maps here. Uh, we had this marked as an incident off US 90 at 35. Textile has not reported any particular crashes or construction going on in that area, but nonetheless uh, that shot at trans guy does show things are looking pretty smooth so far off US 90, but uh, some construction to be on the lookout for that's still going on here off loop 410 northbound at Marbach Road. Uh, we've talked about this off and on for the last few days of uh, some bridge work that's been going on overnight, uh, but it should be wrapping up by Saturday, August 14th. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we did have a stalled vehicle and a few other crashes that have since cleared. Looks like one just popped up here on our maps. We'll take a look at that in just a moment and find out how that could impact that morning drive. But so far, these inbound times are looking really good. If you're going to be coming into the downtown San Antonio area, 26 minutes coming in from I-10 and Bernie right now from 281 and Bulverde. We're looking at 26 minutes as well, and the same goes for 35 and New Braunfels. Uh, but one last look here at US 90 at 35. Things are looking good so far, but we're watching it very closely. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, several area districts, including Schertz, Cibolo, Universal City, ISD, are finally going back to the classroom. It's one of several school districts still giving students the option of wearing masks at two of their campuses here in Bear County. It's because their main office of most of the schools are in Guadalupe County. The district will be sticking with Governor Abbott's order that does not allow for mask mandates. Back here in the county, uh, in Bear County, Northside ISD and also Bernie ISD have also said they will not enforce the mask mandate. Meanwhile, a judge will soon decide if a mask mandate in Bear County can be extended past this coming Monday. This morning, the FDA is preparing to greenlight a third booster shot for the immunocompromised as early as today. ABC's Dan Lieberman has that story. This surge is actually much bigger than anything that we have seen before. In Gainesville, Florida, this doctor says they're seeing younger patients getting sicker faster, nearly all unvaccinated. Across the South, health officials are warning their systems are We have a patient in the back, but they can't unload the patient at a hospital. In Mississippi, their state hospital system saying it could collapse within a week, requesting help from the U.S. Navy hospital ship Comfort. In Texas, more than 10,000 new cases a day with no nurses and few ICU beds. 
All this as Republican Governor Greg Abbott takes Dallas County to court to block a mask mandate. The U.S. is now averaging more than 110,000 new COVID cases a day, the most since February, fueled by the Delta variant, with over 75,000 COVID patients hospitalized nationwide. Everyone needs to be vaccinated. We will never beat this any other way. In Louisiana, critical care patient Mary Lubrano wanting to send a message as she struggles to breathe. This is the scariest I've ever been in my whole life. You take breathing for granted. Today, the FDA expected to authorize a third booster shot for the immunocompromised. But Dr. Anthony Fauci urging all Americans to listen to the science and get the shot. It's crystal clear the enemy is the virus. We have a very good countermeasure against the virus. It's a vaccine. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. Here at home, the danger of the Delta variant is exposing some new concerns for parents. New data shows children who survived COVID-19, even those with mild symptoms, could have long-lasting effects after they recover. <coughs> those symptoms include fatigue and difficulty breathing. For the more severe cases, it could also represent life-altering health issues like early risk for hypertension, heart attack, and stroke. Even if your child never had any manifestations such as fever or cough or runny nose, several weeks later, they can still have a persistent headache or um, feel very fatigued or have this, what, what people are considering or calling uh, brain fogness. Dr. Morera says he's also seeing a spike in the number of mothers with COVID having very premature babies. Texas Republicans ratcheting up efforts to end a month-long standoff with Democrats over new voting measures. But right now, State Senator Carol Alvarado of Houston is still going after launching into a filibuster last night against the GOP priority voting bill. This is a live look. Her filibuster started just before 6 o'clock last night. Yesterday, as the chamber approached a final vote, she is still speaking, as you can see, at this hour. Meanwhile, civil arrest warrants were delivered yesterday. The offices of absent Democrats by officers of the Texas House. Democrats acknowledge they cannot permanently stop the GOP voting bill from passing here in Texas. And time now is 507. It's about 78 degrees out there. Still ahead of first.
first season. So swipe right if you think it's Miss Scarlet with a candlestick. Those are your tech bites. Interesting concept. Yeah, it is interesting. It's like choose your own adventure, kind of like those books. Mixed with Clue. Yeah. Nice. 516. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. A lot of traffic earlier this morning. Yeah, you know, we started off pretty busy, Mark and Stephanie. The shot at Transguide State Highway 151 at Loop 410 does show that, yeah, it's still pretty busy out there. Uh, construction still taking place. We've been talking about this one all week. Uh, there is some bridge work going on out there as well. It's going to be happening for the remainder of the work week, that is. And we'll get to it in just a moment. But right now, things are looking pretty good here in the Alamo City. According to the maps and some of our outline areas, just some construction right now to be out on the lookout for and we're going to break that down here on GMSA throughout the show. Uh, we did have an incident up here just off 281 in Blanco a little bit earlier uh, as you saw on the map if you were with us uh, that has since cleared out. It looks like there must have been something minor there but thankfully things are looking good so far. Uh, so based off that shroud of trans guy just as a reminder again uh, this is at State Highway 151 and bridge work going on out there. It's going to be a full closure of those westbound lanes right on the frontage road of Loop 410. It's been ongoing throughout the week but should be wrapping up by Saturday, August 14th. It's an overnight deal, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So something as a reminder, because based off this shot at Transguide, we do have a lot of drivers that head down this route early in the morning. So just be sure to move over and slow down for those TxDOT crews who are working to improve the roadways. Thank you, Stephen. Mike's got a beautiful picture. It looks like a it's cross nice. between maybe an Italian villa and a Texas ranch. True. Good description. I mean, first <laughs> of all, the flowers, but, you know, in the background there, that sunshine and a nice little tribute to the Temptations, too. Mm -hmm. I've sunshine got sunshine and, and sunshine. a cloudy, cloudy day. A year ago, March, saw Tops and Temps at you, the, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, Majestic. A year ago, March. Yeah. Okay. Back in 2020. Which, before and then before everything. Was, and saw the original ones back in uh, the 80s. So anyway, I, I digress here. But yeah, beautiful picture there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. And uh, clouds starting off this morning. Yep. And then we're going to have plenty of sunshine. All right. This is going back into July. And the blue areas, blue days highlighted there are, this is the average temperature, low and high for each specific day. So most of the time we have been below average and 38 days have been either at or below average. But this is a little bit deceiving because again, the average temperatures. Now there's only been a couple of days where the high temperature was above average. We hit 97 on uh, the 1st of August and it was 95 on the 3rd of July. And so those were both above their respective normal high temperatures. So most of the days though have been well below normal. Of course, we have not hit 100 at all this year yet. Last year it was 36 days. The hottest day was 107. Again, the hottest day so far was back on the 1st of August, 97 degrees. Now we've been very close. I mean, 96 the past couple of days and in your backyard, it it may obviously be hotter than that, but we're just talking about out there officially at the airport. Um, you know, one or two, this is that broad brush computer model, one or two of those showers down there along the coastal plain. There's a couple of them trying to pop up already. Same thing tomorrow. Maybe a few of them try and work their way in here a little bit further. A couple of more clouds around on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be completely cloudy, but this is going to help to hold temperatures down a degree or two. It's not like a huge drop in temperatures, but it'll just keep us down, you know, any, any, little bit is going to help around here and we'll have a few of those stray showers Sunday a better chance for rain again this is just kind of an indication of where there is the chance for these uh, showers to pop up and putting a number on about a 30 percent shot at a, a couple of showers or thunderstorms and that's going to be the case on Monday as well I think we'll still still even have a couple of lingering ones going into the middle of next week so we're not really into you know the, the really really hot type weather again the you know no chance of rain at all type weather again so at least there's going to be a small shot at it all right fred was a tropical storm yesterday and it's been moving over a uh, hispaniola so it kind of tore, tore it apart a little bit 35 mile per hour winds it's got to get back up to uh, 39 to become a tropical storm again and it may as it gets into the uh, straits of florida there it looks like it's going to take almost a direct hit on miami and then just go right up the west coast of florida that's going to be a big old rain producer obviously for them, then that's going to move up in toward the uh, Tennessee Valley as we go into the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week. Again, it's not going to have any, any impact on our weather today. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature then gets up to 96. Again, just a degree below normal, but when it averages out, we'll probably be at or even a little bit above average. Thanks to the low temperatures staying so warm this morning. Now, the next couple of days, trim a degree off temperatures. 
yeah, not a huge cool down. A couple of more clouds around here. Few showers scattered about. Very small chance for a uh, shower or two. M Sunday and Monday, if you had to look at a couple of days where maybe better shot at rain, that'll be on those days. But still, don't get really excited about rain chances here. Every once in a while, I ask you to look into your crystal ball mm -hmm. a bit. Can you look ahead 15 well, to 30 days and give us kind of a general outlook? I, ha I haven't checked the uh, Climate Prediction Center yet. I will as okay. far as their outlook going in here. But for you know a couple of computer models, one I was look at the uh, long range that goes about two weeks down the road. All runs the past few weeks, you know, two weeks down, going to hit 100. Two weeks down the road, we hit 100. Well, that's what's indicating now, but the trend, I mean, the trend in is reality, to keep things kind of in check. That, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've been enjoying that trend. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Right now, it's 521, about 78 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Denzel Washington directs a new film starring Michael B. Jordan, plus 1996 Scream is returning to theaters. Pick three numbers, 628 Fireball Zero. Daily four, three, two, six, six, Fireball Eight. Cash five, four, 11, 13, 20, 35. And Lotto, Texas, 10, 20, 23, 38, 41, 42. And your Powerball numbers, 12, 18, 20, 29, 30. Powerball 16, Power Play 3. Good luck. Plenty of movie news for you today in the world of entertainment. Here is CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Dear Jordan, don't fail me just now. take one look at your mother. Marry me. Yes. That will tell you what I think beautiful is. Here's your first look at A Journal for Jordan, about a soldier writing down advice for his infant son. Michael B. Jordan and Shantae Adams star in the drama, based on a true story and directed by Denzel Washington. A Journal for Jordan hits theaters in December. Do you like scary movies? Scream is back. The 1996 meta-horror movie that redefined the genre is returning to theaters for its 25th anniversary on Sunday, October 10th and Monday, October 11th. Locations and more info at fathomevents.com. How long does a community support journalism? Because now people want to get their news for free and people are saying, oh well, that's not worth a dollar. And that's not how you sustain a democracy. <laughs> One in four U.S. newspapers has shut down in the last 15 years. Storm Lake looks at Iowa's Pulitzer Prize winning Storm Lake Times as it struggles to stay afloat and serve its community. The award winning documentary is set to play in various U.S. cities this summer and fall. Info at stormlakemovie.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Looks interesting. Very interesting. Uh, everybody's had to move with the time, so I'd like to see it. I'd like to check it out. The older gentleman in that almost looked like Brad Pitt in some sort of Mark Twain disguise. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. We'll check it out. 527 now, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're taking a closer look at the difference between third doses of a COVID-19 vaccine and booster shots ahead of the FDA's meeting on boosters for the immunocompromised. Duncan already putting out its fall menu. We'll show you some of the new items you'll be able to order this year. And ahead on GMSA at 6, destructive storms tearing through parts of the country while other areas are dealing with dangerously high temperatures. We're going to have the latest. Making headlines for you this morning, top health officials discuss the very real possibility of third vaccine doses and booster shots. A wild gun battle on the west side has ended with two people dead and two others in the hospital. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say all of this stemmed from a simple car crash. That's coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a humid start to our day again and looking for lots of sun this afternoon. And we're going to talk to Stephen come up. There's a big incident on Loop 410 right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, August 12th. Thanks for joining us for now. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of the week. A repeat of yesterday, repeat of today. Then the rest of the week, though, some subtle changes are going to be um, coming about. First of all, temperature 79, way about I mean, 75 is 
is the uh, the average normal low temperature. So obviously well above that dew points at 74, which means a bunch of humidity out there. Get ready when you uh, open up the front door and with all that humidity, we are still seeing a couple of hints of fog. Five miles visibility, Pleasanton, six New Braunfels, seven Castroville, and then a couple of extra spots here, Beeville and LaGrange. It's about the same situation as yesterday, where at this time we didn't have much. There were just a couple of hints, and then all of a sudden it did start to get thicker as we approached sunrise. So we'll just be on the lookout for that over the next uh, couple of hours. Molds moderate, pigweed, fall elm are on the uh, low side. And uh, if you can cut back on your energy usage later on this afternoon, that would help out. Throughout the day, 96 for a high temperature. Again, same number as yesterday and the day before that. Of course, it's going to feel like it's well up into the hundreds. Some subtle changes are coming about as we go into tomorrow and the weekend. Yeah, subtle as far as a degree or two down, at least down somewhat, and then little rain chances coming in here over the weekend. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, all those big lights out there. What is going on, Stephen? Hey, Mike, uh, thanks so much. Yeah, Steph described it almost like a light show, and that's definitely what it looks like right here at Loop 410 at Gulebeta. You can see that we do have uh, a lot of those flashing lights out there, and that's because TxDOT has reported a crash in that area. We're going to be watching this very closely, but we do know that uh, this could possibly impact traffic now that the morning is starting to get going for some of these drivers our friends at Transguide working to get us a closer shot there but let's go ahead and take a look at our maps right now uh, that reported off here loop 410 southbound near observation drive still early enough to where we're not seeing those delays or slowdowns with traffic but be careful out there also spotting a few stalls here uh, at 18 wheeler actually stalled here off 281 southbound right at should be saying Bassey Road there but that is an 18 wheeler that's been stalled out there just check the shot at Transguide uh, use caution out there this morning make sure you check the vehicles, uh, but taking a look at these inbound times, they are looking pretty good so far right now. 29 minutes still coming in from Seguin uh, if right now and 23 minutes that is coming in from Lavernia and 87 and we're looking at 28 minutes coming in from Floresville, but we really want to bring your attention here to Loop 410 at Gulebra. This shot at Transguy does show that it's getting pretty busy out there. So again, when you see those flashing lights move over and slow down for those first responders, we're watching things very closely right now and stay with us for all the updates here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, a bizarre shooting on the west side has left two people dead and two others in the hospital. San Antonio police say it started with a crash on a neighborhood street, then escalated to the deadly violence. Our Katrina Weber is live at public, public safety headquarters with a report. And Katrina, how did a crash lead to gunfire? Well, that's one of many questions that police here is still trying to figure out. They say this is all still under investigation. What they have been able to tell us is that the woman who they say caused this crash also was the first to fire a gun. This all happened late last night, a little before 10, in the 400 block of Hazel, not far from Frio City Road. San Antonio police say a woman was driving her car down that street when she plowed into a parked car. Well, they say the owners of the car as well as neighbors came out to see what happened. At some point after that, police say the driver pulled out a gun and started shooting. A man, woman and teenage boy all were hit. The man died at the scene. The woman and the teen were rushed to a hospital. Police say a neighbor then fired back, hitting and killing the driver who they say started all the shooting. Now, officers told us that they are not sure how or why things escalated that far, but they do refer to the driver in this case as the suspect. And they say she was a woman in her 20s or 30s. The man who was killed was in his 50s. The other two victims at last check were in critical condition. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Keep us posted. So far, only about half of all Americans are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, it's looking like some of those fully vaccinated people will be asked to roll up their sleeves again. The protection from the vaccine is more important than ever. And more people are getting vaccinated now, about 500,000 a day. 22 states have fully vaccinated more than half of their residents. But what about third doses and boosters? First of all, let's look at the slight difference. Additional doses would be for the immunocompromised who did not have a good initial response to vaccination. Boosters would be for people who did have a good response, but its effectiveness is waning. Sources say the FDA is expected to authorize a third dose for the immunocompromised by the end of the week. 
they often didn't generate enough antibodies even in the first place. So they didn't get the full protection. The CDC estimates about 9 million Americans are immunocompromised. And a Johns Hopkins study found they're 485 times more likely to end up in the hospital or die from COVID, even if they're vaccinated. Right now, authorization of another dose is just for people who got Pfizer or Moderna. Studies on Johnson & Johnson are still in the works. And boosters for generally healthy people also still in the works. We've been looking for evidence that immunity is waning and that breakthrough infections, especially hospitalizations and deaths, may be going up. And based on trends in the data, medical experts say widespread boosters are likely at some point. What we are trying to figure out right now is the right timing. Something the CDC is set to talk about Friday. I'm Britt Conway reporting. There is a bipartisan bill on the table in the Senate that takes aim at the app store dominance of tech giants like Apple and Google. The proposal would ban certain contractual obligations that app developers say they have to accept from major app stores in order to reach consumers. For example, Apple wouldn't be able to require apps to use its proprietary payment channels to process the sale of digital goods and services. Under the legislation, Apple could also be made to allow third-party app stores to run on iPhone. Proponents of the bill say it will make the digital marketplace more free and fair for smaller companies. Opponents suggested it will compromise the safety, reliability, and ease of use of app stores. Today, the U.S. Census Bureau is releasing new population data that will be used to reshape U.S. House seats and state legislative districts for the next decade. The data being released shows a population of counties, cities, and neighborhoods in the 2020 census that will serve as the building block for redistricting that must be done in most states before the 2022 elections. The official goal is to redraw districts with roughly the same number of people, but many Republicans and Democrats also will be trying to draw districts that make it more likely for their candidates to win. Time check, just about 538 and about 78 degrees. Coming up next, what expecting moms need to know about being vaccinated for COVID-19 and the Delta variant. And outside with live cam, hovering around 78 degrees out of San Antonio International Airport. You're waking up with us right here on GMSA. We'll be back after this. 540, welcome back to GMSA. Listen to this, a surge in new, more complicated COVID cases among pregnant women is taking a toll. We are told an expectant mother here has lost her child while battling the virus in the ICU. Ursula Perry explains why it's happening and what pregnant women and families need to know. It's very tough, very tough. And there's these decisions are going on every day in our, in our unit and around the city and around the state and around the country. Uh, so this is really mission critical. A critical mission to get the unvaccinated on board with the shot, especially since over the last couple of weeks, we've gone from more pregnant women in the ICU from the new Delta variant to a mom actually losing her child because of it. The cases we've seen uh, where mom has lost the baby have been where mom is just so critically ill uh, that it's not even safe for her to deliver and that uh, we're trying to preserve mom's life first priority. And unfortunately, sometimes we're not able to save the baby in those cases, especially if it's really, really early in pregnancy. The heartbreak in Dr. Ramsey's message he hopes will encourage pregnant mothers and those who live with them to get vaccinated, if at all possible, and to wear a mask. He says it is out of control at the moment, something no one planned for. As for why it's happening, it's the new Delta variant, a characteristic that we are seeing for the first time. The first and second surges last year, we did not see the number of women in the hospital who are pregnant that we're seeing today. So this is certainly a major shift from what we've seen with the previous surges we had. If there's good news to be had regarding the COVID pandemic, it might be this. There is no evidence that there's a long-term impact on newborns who are born to surviving mothers of COVID-19. In fact, it's believed that the antibodies are passed on from the mother to the child, so the newborn has some protection for the virus for the first three months. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 542 and about 78 degrees right now. Take a look. We've got another pet who could sure use a new home. Check in with our friends from the San Antonio Humane Society coming up next. We're here with 
Kim from the Humane Society, and we're checking out another beautiful kitten. This is... This is Ariel. Ariel, love the yes. name. Yes, look at Ariel. I mean, she's orange and white, beautiful, beautiful markings. Um, a two-month-old, a little bit of a mix. Not quite sure exactly what, what she is, but she is, again, just gorgeous cat, gorgeous yeah. little kitten. So. She's so relaxed. I mean, I'm sure she's a little nervous being out here, but she's doing a great job. And she yes, just purring out the storm. Yeah, you <laughs> you, you can hear. It. She would make a perfect family pet, and you guys absolutely. have a lot of kittens there. That we uh, do, need homes. we do absolutely. We have a lot of kittens that need homes, so you can come out and see us at our Fredericksburg location, 4804. Um, you can give us a call. We are open seven days a week from 12 to 7. <laughs> she's wondering what's going on. With the she <laughs> she uh, loves the camera. Like <laughs> not shy. I don't care. Yes. Not shy at all. Anything else you want to mention about what's going on there at the Humane Society? Yeah, I mean, we are in need of, you know, volunteers to come out and help. We need donations, anything from newspapers to uh, pet beds to towels to bed sheets, anything like that you can drop off at our location. Every little bit helps. And exactly. Forget about that kind of stuff. It's not just adoption. You need help monetarily or yes. with donations and yes. things like that. So important yes. to remember, an aerial is up for adoption. People, yes. if, if someone wants to adopt her, they can come now? Yes, absolutely. They can okay. come today. They can come. We're open 12, uh, seven days a week from 12 to 7. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. Thanks, Justin. In your morning consumer headlines, Amtrak is updating its vaccination requirements. According to a company-wide memo, employees who do not get the vaccine must either prove they have a valid medical reason or receive weekly testing. New hires have to show proof starting on October 4th, but current workers have until November 1st to be fully vaccinated. According to the Washington Post, the company's mandate will apply to its more than 18,000 employees. We are more than a month away from autumn, but Duncan is already ready to welcome in the fall season. The donut chain unveiling its fall menu. The lineup includes a lot of pumpkin flavored products like a new pumpkin cream cold brew and a pumpkin spice signature latte. There's also new pumpkin flavored donuts, muffins and munchkins. New fall menu will hit Duncan locations nationwide by August 18th. The autumn season kicks off on September 22nd. Wow, already. Well, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. A lot of uh, flashing lights there on Loop 410 and Culebra Road. That's right, Mark and Steph uh, taking a look here at Loop 410 and Culebra. We do see those flashing lights, and right now we know TxDOT has reported a pretty serious crash out there. Now, uh, we are working to get a little bit more information, so just stay with us as we bring you those updates. But we can tell you right now that TxDOT has reported that the exit there at Military is closed right now, uh, where that crash is reported again, Loop 410 southbound on the maps. Uh, not early enough to where we're are still early enough, I should say, not seeing any impact with any traffic slowdowns, but use caution in that area. Again, that exit at military is closed as first responders work to clear that scene. Oh, again, seeing some stalls out here. We told you about this a little bit earlier. An 18 wheeler actually stalled out there at 281 southbound right at Bassey Road. It's still being reported out there, according to Transguide. Uh, so just being on the lookout for that if you're traveling down 281 southbound later this morning. Uh, another stalled vehicle also reported not too far there from Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. So it's been pretty busy as now we're getting the morning really going here. But overall, these issues right now seem to be a little bit scattered. But the main thing that we're going to be keeping a very close eye on is going to be this crash again reported here of Loop 410 at Culebra, where we still have these first responders out there on the scene. Again, use caution driving through that area. We'll have those updates coming up later this morning. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Boy, Charlotte's been busy. Oh, this is a right? cool <laughs> picture. I mean, yeah. have you ever, you know, in your backyard or somewhere when a walk out and a spider has made a web like that? Well, and the sun's got to hit it just right to get the maximum effect. But what always fascinates me is how they made this thing because, you know, it's like there's an attachment point way up there and way down there. Yeah. And yeah, it, that so cool looking. Anyway, thank you very much for that picture, Yvonne. Appreciate that one. All right. Big one. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, that was a very, very big web. All right, lots of clouds that are hanging around this morning. Our our usual start that we've had around here. All right, we are talking about the, uh, i got to go grab a different uh, clicker out here, but the 6 to 10 day and then 8 to 14 day outlook. This is from the Climate Prediction Center, and there are indications that we would be slightly slightly above normal as far as temperatures are concerned. This is the uh, a small chance that we would be above normal as far as temperatures are concerned, six to 10 day outlook. And then as far as precipitation, either normal amounts of precipitation or uh, a small chance that we would be slightly below that. Then going into the 20th through the 26th, 
there is a chance for temperatures to be a little bit above normal and as far as precipitation about the same at or maybe uh, slightly below normal as far as precipitation goes toward the end of the month. And then looking at the three month outlook, which is August, September and October right now, it looks like temperatures will be or at least the chance that they will be at or a little bit above normal and just about normal precipitation around here. So it's not like we're looking at anything in the next couple of weeks or in the next few months to be to be really on the extreme side. Satellite radar picture. We got low clouds. This kind of see that darker shade of gray sort of settling on in here. Those are our morning clouds. We've got these few uh, showers down here along the coastal plain, and this is where if anything pops up, it's just going to be down there to the uh, southeast today. Now going into the next couple of days, a few more of these are going to try and work their way further inland and you know, rain chances are not that great, but just one or two of them out there, which is what uh, this computer model is uh, indicating. You know, a couple of these down there along the, the coastal plain, maybe as far west as 37 or perhaps getting a little bit closer, but then we go into tomorrow and we're going to have a well, obviously our morning clouds a little bit better chance for a few showers scattered about here and there, but again, not great rain chances and that will be the case in tomorrow. Slightly better chance on Saturday, but we're only looking at perhaps a 30% chance at best by Sunday and then into Monday. Those would be the two days where but the best odds, albeit small, for any rain. 90 today at noon. Partly cloudy skies. High temperatures, just like the past couple of days, up to 96. Of course, one degree below normal. That's been the trend for the past couple of months. It will feel like it's well up into the hundreds, though, with all that humidity. And we've got plenty of humidity hanging around here this morning as well, as you might guess. Tomorrow, Okay, so we shave a degree or two off temperatures, uh, one or two showers out there, per, primarily along the, the coastal plain, the sea breeze, and then slightly better chance of rain coming in here Sunday and Monday. Again, most of us won't see rain, but there's that chance and temperatures stay just trimmed off slightly. Uh, everything keeps trending towards flirting with the century mark and it kind of rises and falls. We've been in peaks and valleys yeah. all summer long, but no spikes. Right, no so spikes. I don't mind it at all. So. Yeah. Knock on a plexiglass. <laughs> knock yeah. on a plexiglass. All of us. Steven, okay. you can knock on Formica if you want. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we all got it. Come in. <laughs> 552, about 78. Oh, thank you. Uh, everybody now. And coming up next, how a local business is helping an Olympic gold medalist achieve her dream of owning a food truck. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. Pick 3628 Fireball 0. Big old goose egg. Daily four numbers 3266 Fireball 8. Cash 5, 4, 11, 13, 20, 35. And a lot of Texas, 10, 20, 23, 38, 41, 42. Your Powerball numbers, 12, 18, 20, 29, 30. Powerball 16, Power Play 3. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the pandemic. The FDA is expected to authorize a third shot for some people just hours from now as hospital admissions hit their highest level in six months. Plus, the new guidance from the CDC about vaccines and pregnant women. Dr. Fauci joins us live. That plus much more coming up only on GMA. We'll see you soon. A San Antonio business is stepping in to help an Olympic gold medalist get a food truck she's always wanted for her mother. T Tamira Mensa Stock is the first African-American woman to win gold in wrestling in Olympic history. Her plan was to use $30,000 from her prize money to purchase her mom, Shonda Wells, a food truck. Wells is a hardworking certified nurse assistant who tries to cook food on the side for the community. After the CEO and president of Cruising Kitchens heard about Mensa Stock's goal, his company stepped in to start building a food truck for her free of charge. Mensa Stock says this is a dream come true and it's been a long time coming. Cruising Kitchen says it'll spend the next four months building a customized truck. Awesome. Heading our next hour, GMSA hospitals across the Lone Star State filling up as new cases of the coronavirus continue to soar. This is the FDA is expected to approve a COVID booster shot. We will tell you what you need to know this morning. A massive landslide in India leaves more than a dozen people dead this morning. We will have the very latest. And we've got an update on a deadly shooting over on our city's west side. Four people involved, two are dead. Katrina Weber is live with an update on that coming up at the top of the hour. But first, as we go to break, 
Got an 18 wheeler on the side of the road at 281 and Bassey. Not sure what's happening out there with that big rig right now, but we'll try to get you updated with Stephen Cavazos coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Bullets fly in a west side neighborhood and now police are trying to figure out why. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The shooting left two people dead and two others in the hospital. I'll have that story. Also coming up, the FDA expected to approve a coronavirus booster shot. That decision could come as soon as this morning. We're going to tell you what to expect. Outside with Lycam, we know to expect heat and humidity. The uh, heat and disease later today will be back in dangerous territory. Mike Osterhage has more. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. First off, we hope you slept well last night. It is Thursday. It is August 12th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a good week so far, but if you get out in the afternoon, gosh, look for some shade. Take those precautions we all know about this time of year. Mike is back with more on that and uh, looking ahead to some very tiny rain chances. At least there's that chance of rain coming yes. in here. Uh, you know, down along the coastal plain, one or two of them uh, the next few days, but then slightly better shot at rain over the weekend. And yeah, it's uh, it's hot this morning. You walk outside, the humidity is going to greet you. <laughs> the sun is not greeting us as of yet. It's going to be coming up in just about an hour. We are seeing a little bit of fog like the past couple of days. Pleasanton now has dropped to four miles, five New Braunfels, seven Castroville. Nothing too thick right now. Beeville is now down to two and a half miles visibility, so we'll just have to continue you obviously watch this in the next few hours like yesterday. The fog did continue to get thicker as we approach sunrise and just after that. So be on the lookout. Molds moderate, pigweed, fall elm are both low. The updated count is going to be coming out in uh, roughly an hour, hour and a half. If you can conserve energy somewhat this afternoon, that would help out. Shave a few bucks off the electric bill when it comes out. That always helps out. Temperatures, we will uh, stay right around upper 70s, a few degrees above normal, and then nice big warm up. We keep some of our morning clouds hanging around here, then those will continue to clear on out. We'll be right around 90 today at noon and top off high temperature of 96. Now, in the books, today is going to go down as an above normal day on as far as average between the low and the high temperature, but still that high is one degree below the uh, average normal high temperature of 97 degrees. So we'll take anything we can get. But of course, like Mark was alluding to, it's going to be feeling like it's well up into the uh, the low hundreds. Now we get that trim a couple of degrees off going in toward the weekend and bump up rain chances just a, a bit. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, still got that big uh, incident over there, 410? You know, we got a good update, Mike. Uh, thankfully, that has since cleared out, but uh, now we are seeing some of these stalls. So uh, we'll go ahead and get to this in just a moment, but uh, we did have that incident off of 410 at Culebra. That has since cleared out of the exit at Military. Looks like it has since reopened. However, uh, we are we still have this stalled 18-wheeler out here off 281 at Bassey, as you can see right there. Been there for quite a while now that we have uh, really been seeing it here on Trans Guy. So just use caution driving through that area, move over and slow down. Uh, it does appear that some of the driver that is uh, may still be inside the vehicle. So just take some caution out there, or the 18 wheeler, I should say. Uh, that's again 281 southbound right at Bassey Road. Seeing more of these stalls popping up now that the morning is getting going here. This one reported off I-35 southbound at Ben Zingelman Road and seeing another stall further up here off I-10 westbound at Loop 1604. Uh, as a reminder, check those vehicles before getting out on the roadway. We've been seeing a lot more stalls this week especially now that school uh, has just started for some of these areas, school districts. So use some caution and make sure you check those vehicles so the kiddos can get to where they need to be on time safely. Another stall again reported here off Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. You can see that trend uh, that we're seeing right now this morning on our maps. But inbound times are still looking pretty good. If you're going to be traveling to San Antonio from any of these neighboring locations right now, 28 minutes coming in from 37 and 17 minutes coming in from 35 in Lytle. We're looking at a 19 minute commute time from Highway 90 and Castro. But one last look here at Transguide. Again, this seems to be an issue right now for uh, the driver there off 281 at Bassey. Just use caution driving through that area. We'll be watching the things, the roads closely and see how this could impact that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Right now, we want to get to our top story. San Antonio police say a car crash appears to be what sparked a gun battle in a west side neighborhood. By the time it was over, two people were dead and two others were in a hospital. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with that story. And Katrina, we understand one of those two people who were killed is the suspect in this case. 
Well, that's right. Police described her as a woman in her 20s or 30s, someone who was driving a car one minute and then shooting a gun the next. And they say that uh, this, hap this started with the woman plowing into a parked car in the 400 block of Hazel Street near Frio City Road. That crash before 10 last night apparently caused quite a cre uh, commotion. Police say that neighbors and the car owners came out of their homes to see what happened. They say that's when things took a strange turn, with that driver suddenly pulling out a gun and firing, hitting three people. During the shooting, a neighbor from a nearby residence uh, intervenes, comes to the aids of the victims, opens fire on our, on our suspect, striking her multiple times. Both the driver, the suspect, and a man in his 50s who police say that driver shot, died from their wounds. Another woman and teenage boy also were hit by the gunfire. They were taken to a hospital and at last check were in critical condition. The police are still not sure how or why things escalated this far. They say this case is still under investigation. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Texas Republicans ratcheting up efforts to end a month-long standoff with Democrats over new voting measures here in Texas. But right now, State Sen Senator Carol Alvarado of Houston is still going after launching a filibuster last night against the GOP voting bill. Here is a live look. Her filibuster started just before 6 p.m. Yesterday, as the chamber approved a f approach to final vote, and she is still speaking at this hour. Meanwhile, civil arrest warrants were delivered yesterday to the offices of absent Democrats by officers of the Texas House. Democrats acknowledge they cannot permanently stop the GOP voting bill from passing here in Texas. Attorneys are still trying to reach the parents of more than 300 migrant children separated at the U.S.-Mexico border. The families were split under the Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy. The Biden administration says it is committed to helping identify and reunite them as part of a family reunification task force. According to a federal court filing, the parents of 31 other children have been found since June. Here at home, the danger of the Delta variant is raising some concerns for parents. New data shows children who survived COVID-19, even those with mild symptoms, could have long-lasting effects after they recover. Those symptoms include fatigue and difficulty breathing. For the more severe cases, they could also represent life-altering health issues like early risk for hypertension, heart attack, and stroke. Even if your child never had any manifestations such as fever or cough or runny nose, several weeks later, they can still have a persistent headache or um, feel very fatigued or have this, what, what people are considering or calling uh, brain fogness. Dr. Moreira says he's also seeing a spike in the number of mothers with COVID having premature babies. This morning, several other area school districts, including Shirt, Cibolo, Universal City, ISD, are going back to class. It's one of several districts still giving students the option of wearing masks at two of their campuses here in Bear County. It's because their main office and most of their schools are in Guadalupe County. The district will be sticking with Governor Abbott's order that does not allow for mask mandates. Northside ISD and Bernie ISD have also said they will not, not enforce the mask mandate. Meanwhile, a judge will soon decide if a mask mandate in Bear County can be extended past this coming Monday. And we want to remind you that KSET has you covered for all of your back to school needs, updates on mask wearing, school supply discounts for teachers, and even information on homeschooling. That's all posted for you online on our website at KSET.com. It's now 608, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the missions bounce back in a big way against the Midlands. And we've got some game stats from their matchup last night. And a welcome sight for Cowboys fans. Dak Prescott back at practice, ready to throw. But is he ready for a game? That's coming up in your morning sports brief. And taking a look outside with live cam. A humid 78 degrees, but tolerable. This afternoon is going to get a lot hotter. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Great news for Cowboys fans. Dak Prescott back at practice throwing the ball. He's not a full throttle yet after suffering a muscle strain in his throwing shoulder. Head coach Mike McCarthy told us how the team will move forward with their star quarterback. I think like anything, I, I think it's only natural when, when you shut a quarterback down completely, you know, throwing, then there's a process where you got to build him back up. So 
Uh, so we'll continue to go through that regiment uh, today. So he'll do a little more throwing today than he did yesterday. Everything's good. Yeah, I talked to him this morning, so he's uh, feeling good and just wants to keep progressing. Dak is not scheduled to play in the uh, Cowboys' next preseason game against Arizona tomorrow night at 9. Right now, the coaching staff is looking at the third preseason game for Dak's potential return. Meanwhile, Houston Texans kick off their preseason Saturday night when they travel to Green Bay to take on the Packers. With Deshaun Watson's tenure with the team still very much in question, it appears their first draft pick quarterback, Davis Mills, will see some playing time for the first time as a Texan. I'm just happy if I get to play on Saturday, obviously, kind of go out there and show what I can do. Um, I'll have really talented players around me on, on the same team that I'm looking forward to going on there and playing with, and I'm just looking, looking forward to having a lot of fun. Becky Hammond telling the Associated Press, quote, please don't hire me to check a box. Hire me because of my skill sets and coaching, end quote. Again, that's what she told the Associated Press during a telephone interview after the Spurs assistant was passed over for at least one coaching vacancy this offseason. Hammond admits there are three jobs in the NBA that are very difficult to get, and many thought she would be the next head coach of Portland until she lost out to Chauncey Billups. All right, great news. Missions fans much better last night against Midland. After failing to score a run Tuesday night and only recording three hits, Missions bounced back with a big win against the Rockhounds. Missions managed to drive in seven runs early in the game. That led to a 13-4 victory over the Rockhounds. With the win, San Antonio's at 39-46 and on the season. The series continues tonight at Nelson Wolf Stadium starting at 7 o'clock. That is more like it, Missions. Yes, we like to see that a lot better. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos on the accident. Has it cleared up yet? Yeah, you know, we have some good news out there. It definitely has cleared, and we want to take our eyes on a few other uh, things happening around the city from the shots at Trans Guide. Some construction going off there at 35 at Watson Lane East. As you can see, some bridge work actually happening. Loop 410 at Gulebda, where that crash happened. Looks pretty good right now, and we also have a really good update here for that stalled 18-wheeler that we told you about a little bit earlier off 2 at Bassey, as you can see, uh, getting some assistance right now. But uh, since it is an 18 wheeler, it's unclear how long it's going to actually take to get this guy out of there. But use some caution driving through that area. Uh, looks like they just started receiving assistance right now. So again, be cautious when you see those flashing lights. This reported off 281 at Bassey Road, southbound of 281, I should say. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of those stalls, the same issues right now, still being reported according to TxDOT. I-35 southbound of Ben's Engelman, uh, Engelman Road. That is another stalled vehicle there. Seeing a few more here. The one here off I-10 westbound at loop 1604 and another stalled vehicle right here off loop, four, or loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. Uh, again, we can't stress it enough. Check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway because now that the morning's getting going, this could impact other drivers commute time. So just be cautious. But one last look at 281 at Bassey Road where our friend there is finally getting some assistance. Again, just be cautious driving through the area, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, good advice. And another warm afternoon. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even think warm really describes it well. It's just plain old hot this <laughs> afternoon. And, uh, you know, we got the heat index readings, and that's not something that just we throw out there to make it seem worse than it is. That's what it actually feels like to your body. It's kind of a almost a measure of how efficiently or inefficiently your body can cool itself because you have some of that humidity in and you just you can't cool down as easily. Uh, temperatures this morning, mid upper 70s around here, very warm and humid. And then later on today, 96. But again, that heat index will be up into the low hundreds. And got to emphasize again, all these numbers are in the shade. You get out there in the direct sun and boy, it's I mean, sun's just kind of cooking you. So lots of shade, lots and lots of water, especially for the kids now. You know, like the experts say, don't wait till you're thirsty. And with, you know, football practice and ban and cheer and everything else that's going to be outdoors, keep the kids really hydrated. All right, Perseid meteor shower is going on right now. Um, not the best viewing time, but not the best viewing conditions right now, I should say. But if you can head out to Bernie out in the hill country, somewhere away from all the, the city lights and before the clouds move on in here, and I don't know how you time that picture, but boy, that's a good one seeing some of those uh, meteors out there. So uh, it's still going to be pretty good viewing tomorrow morning. Then it's going to start to the, this is kind of the, the peak of the viewing as of right now. But a great uh, picture there of the uh, Perseid meteor shower. It is starting to lighten up, but obviously you can now see the clouds a lot more this morning. And high temperature yesterday, 96 degrees. Once again, now, of course, in your backyard, it may be 
triple digits, but on this map, the reporting areas, just a couple of triple digits out there, and that'll be about the situation today. Split in hairs, but one degree below normal, and we'll be right around mid 90s all around the area. Although, again, the humidity, you get the heat index readings approaching 105, and that's where it, it's really tough for your body to cool itself all that efficiently. All that efficiently, so you really got to take it easy. Here's the water vapor imagery, and got a couple of different circulations around here, but there is a slight bit of well, just kind of energy. It's not really a low, but you can see that that kind of counterclockwise circulation there. There. That's going to allow for a few sea breeze showers along the coastal plain. Uh, one or two more tomorrow. We'll have a couple of those around here tomorrow. That's when I start putting the small chance of rain into the forecast. And you know, it's not like we got a big system moving on in here, but at least there'll be one or two of them popping up here and there over the weekend. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 96. Of course, it will feel like the hundreds. And then tomorrow, a few extra clouds. Shave a degree or two off temperatures. Same thing on Saturday and a few of those, you know, scattered about count them on one hand type showers, but at least uh, some folks will be seeing some of that Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's going to be well, comparatively speaking, the best chance for the rain, uh, although still small and then temperatures are going to be, you know, a couple of degrees below normal. Can't beat that. Awesome. It's the alternative. You guys exactly. re remember me telling you part of my yard was starting to die? Uh -huh. I just realized the problem. I've got two kinds of grass out there. We've got Bermuda oh. and San Augustine. The San Augustine, of course, is thriving. It's pretty yes. hardy. The other one is fading fast. Yeah. But at least Bermuda, I'm the last green thumb person to talk me about too. this, has those deep <laughs> roots, so it does it's surface die out, but it will come back. It will come back. Yeah, yeah. They almost all comes back. You'll have to do extra care for the other the other part of the lawn. I'm hand watering most <laughs> almost <laughs> almost every evening. Yeah, most uh, of us gonna have to water. All right, thank you, Mike. And time now is 6:20, and it's about 78 degrees out there. Still to come, airlines beginning to feel the impact of the coronavirus Delta variant. TSA is reporting the lowest numbers of flyers in months. That's coming up in your GMA first look. For bathroom odors that linger, try Febreze Small Spaces. Just press firmly and it continuously eliminates odors in the air and on soft surfaces for 45 days. No matter what sometimes keeps you up, Nature Made helps you win the night. Our extended release melatonin helps you fall asleep and stay asleep. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. To forget your worries and escape to a place where the water is warm, the people are even warmer, and there are a thousand worry-free moments waiting to unfold. Call 1-800-SANDALS. In this morning's GMA First Look, after months of soaring passenger numbers during the pandemic, New signs of a potential slowdown amid a new surge in COVID cases. The TSA reporting it screened the lowest number of people in almost two months on Tuesday. And Southwest Airlines saying this week it's seeing more cancellations now, blaming the spread of the Delta variant. Industry-wide, experts say demand is flatlining for domestic flights and dropping for international. Demand for searches for international flights is down about 12% since uh, mid-July. And hesitation to travel seems to be growing. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know before booking your next trip, including the latest on airline cancellation policies. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Instagram rolling out new features to block offensive DMs or direct messages and comments. Users can turn on limits, which will prevent anyone who doesn't follow you or recent followers from commenting on your posts and sending you direct messages. Instagram has also expanded its list of offensive words, which can be automatically filtered. 
and Tinder's interactive series Swipe Night is returning for its second season. Reports say it will engage users in a Gen Z whodunit aimed at matching people based on their hunches about an unfolding crime. Tinder estimates 20 million users took part in Swipe Night's first season. Right now, 625, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Katrina Weber will join us live with the latest on a shooting on the city's west side that killed at least two people. And let's check Transguide right now. 35 at Topper Wine looks really good right now in both directions. Heavy traffic uh, affecting these inbound lanes. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up. He'll get you up to speed on any traffic trouble spots around the Alamo City as you're waking up on a Thursday morning. Things get especially heated after a car crash on the west side. Four people shot, two of them dead. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Destructive storms and rising heat waves across the country impacting thousands of Americans. We're going to have the latest. We're used to the heat around here, but the heat index is the problem area for later today. Mike is standing by with more as the sun is coming up over the Alamo City. Good morning to you. It's Thursday morning, the 12th of August. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it's almost Friday and it, well, I don't want to say it will be cooler, but there are some changes in store this weekend. Yeah, as Mike looks further down the road in his uh, seven day forecast, he's got a shot at a shower or storm. Yes, don't get really excited about the rain chances, okay. but uh, there will be a couple of months. Some of us will get some free lawn watering, but the majority of us won't see rain. And yeah, temperatures will be down a degree or two. This morning, boy, it looks a lot like it did yesterday and the day before that. And number wise, it is a lot like yesterday and the day before that, although I think we're actually up uh, compared to yesterday. It's 79 right now. That's four above the normal average low temperature. And with the dew point of 74, that means there's a bunch of moisture out there. Pleasanton, now the fog has thickened up as, uh, well, like yesterday, again, keep comparing that, but as we approach sunrise, we're starting to see thicker fog there, so just a mile and a quarter, and watch it as these uh, visibilities do tend to drop down, like the case at LaGrange, seven at New Braunfels, Gonzales, and Uvalde. Um, just, again, Next hour, a couple of hours, watch out for some of this fog to thicken up just in patches. Mold is moderate. Pigweed and fall elm are both on the low side. You can uh, sit, conserve a little energy later on this afternoon at peak use time. That would uh, help out. And uh, today, mostly cloudy, again, humid this morning. We will see more sunshine. Heat index readings well up into the hundreds. Matter of fact, we're going to be hovering around 105 as far as what it will feel like. And that's where your body just really has a tough time cooling itself. So you got to take it easy. Lots of shade, lots of water. Tomorrow, bit meaning a degree or two lower in temperature, take anything we can get, a shower or two, and that'll be the case in toward the weekend. One or two more showers, maybe one or two degrees further down. Hey, we'll take it. Beats uh, triple digits. None of that in the forecast. Details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos had a big problem earlier, but pretty good right now. You know, we've had a big few big problems out there uh, this morning, Mike, and things have since been resolving here. But 281 at Bassey Road, we still have this big 18 wheeler out there that has been there for quite a while. Actually, throughout the show here on GMSA, we've been watching it pretty closely. Uh, they are receiving some assistance right now, but now that the road is uh, the morning is really getting going, we're seeing more people out there in 281. Uh, this could be a problem a little bit later on as that person or that assistance uh, as that driver that I should say does start to receive some assistance out there. So use caution this morning if you drive down 281 southbound. Uh, again, that's right here in those southbound lanes right at Bassey Road. As you just saw from Transguide, uh, seeing a few more of these stalls. This one not too far from there. We showed you top wine a little bit earlier before the commercial break uh, uh, right there. Not too far at Judson, another stalled vehicle out there. So that seems to be the dominant issue. We see a lane blocked right here off Loop 410 northbound at I-35, uh, the exit at 145A. Again, these stalls right now are the big issue that we are spotting this morning, but the inbound times are still looking pretty good if you're going to be traveling into the downtown San Antonio area in the next few minutes. 25 minutes from I-10 and Bernie, 27 from 281 and Bolverde, and we're looking at 26 minutes from New Braunfels. So, uh, yes, while the roads are looking good right now and some of those problems have since resolved, uh, do you some caution out there because there are a few issues that you need to be on the lookout for. Mark Stephanie? Thank you, Stephen. Gunfire in a west side neighborhood has left two people dead and two others wounded. San Antonio police say the suspect in this case is someone who had caused a car crash just moments before. 
Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters where this case is still under investigation. And Katrina, what do we know about the two people who were killed? Well, one of them is a woman in her 20s or 30s who police say is the suspect in this case. The other, a man in his 50s who it seems lived in that area. The police initially responded to that west side neighborhood for a car crash in the 400 block of Hazel Street, but they say that quickly changed to a shooting call. They say a woman was driving down the street shortly before 10 last night when she suddenly plowed into a parked car. For some reason, police say that led to even more violence. Residents concerned the neighbors coming out, checking on the, uh, the suspect in the suspect vehicle. At that point, they are uh, fired upon for uh, some unknown, unprovoked reason. The police say it was the driver who started shooting, hitting a man, woman, and teenage boy. The man is the one who was killed. The other two victims were taken to a hospital. Police say one of the neighbors who saw what was going on also grabbed a gun and shot the suspect, killing her. Now, those two survivors at last check were in critical condition. I did check with the medical examiner's office to see if uh, they had the names of the two people were, who were killed. And so far, they are not releasing that information just yet. Police again say they are not sure why this crash escalated as far as it did to that deadly shooting. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police are investigating an apparent road rage shooting on a busy roadway. So it started on East Houston and Loop 410 around 730 last night. That's where police say one driver shot at another in a black Cadillac. That man was hit in the shoulder, but managed to follow the suspect to a gas station near Pecan Valley and Goliad, where that suspect was taken into custody. The man who was shot was taken to the hospital. He is expected to be OK. Turning now to the coronavirus, more than 1,300 cases continue to pop up each day here in Bear County, according to the seven day average. In our hospitals, 1,284 patients are being treated, 331 are in ICU, and 194 are on ventilators. The state health department deploying 2,500 medical personnel to help in hospitals. In other parts of Texas, Houston's LBJ Hospital is reporting it is at 100% capacity and they're adding tents for the overflow of COVID-19 patients. The hospital says 63% of the ICU patients have COVID. The president and CEO of Harris Health System, which runs LBJ, says the crisis is not coming in a week or two. It's happening right now. While the tents may help with overflow capacity of COVID-19 patients, the hospital admits they currently do not have the staff to operate them yet. The Food and Drug Administration is expected to approve COVID-19 booster shots possibly by tomorrow. Additional doses would be for the immunocompromised who did not have a good initial response to the vaccine. The CDC estimates about 9 million Americans are immunocompromised and a Johns Hopkins study found they are 485 times more likely to end up in the hospital or die from COVID even if they're vaccinated. They often didn't generate enough antibodies even in the first place, so they didn't get the full protection. Across the country, more people are getting vaccinated now, about 500,000 a day, and 22 states have fully vaccinated more than half of their residents. The new school year is already here for some and just weeks away for others. So parents have questions and concerns and we took those straight to the educators and doctors. It was part of our back to school town hall hosted by KSET Community, this time focusing on students in middle school and high school. They discussed last school year, students mental health and the debate on masking up in schools. We had very little problem with students wearing masks. Uh, the majority of them had no problem. They understood the concept. We have a great administration. We have very cooperative teachers. Children uh, in school over the past year who wore masks and whether it protected um, others around them from transmission of infection and the data is solid that it did. This was our second back to school town hall. Last time we focused on students in elementary school. To watch both town halls, you can head to our website at kset.com. In your morning headlines today, the U.S. Census Bureau is releasing new population data that will be used to reshape U.S. House seats and state legislative districts for the next decade. The data being released shows the population of counties, cities, and neighborhoods in the 2020 census. 
That will serve as the building block for redistricting that must be done for most states before the 2022 elections. The goal is to redraw districts with roughly the same number of people, but many Republicans and Democrats will also be trying to draw districts that make it more likely for their candidates to win. At least 13 people are dead this morning after a landslide in northern India. Rocks and heavy boulders crashed onto a highway, leaving a passenger bus and several other vehicles trapped under the debris. According to local police, more than 20 people are still missing. Search and rescue teams continue to search through that rubble. Well, back here at home, uh, about 200 million Americans are facing extreme heat. Some areas that are usually in the 70s this time of year will be well over 100 degrees. And for millions of others, strong storms are leaving behind a trail of destruction. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning from Seattle. Woody, woody hot. To Philadelphia. Mucho caliente hoy. More than half the country is sweltering as dangerously high temperatures sweep the nation. Feel like temperatures topping 100 from coast to coast. You know, it's definitely going to get worse. In Minnesota, a toddler died and his twin brother was hospitalized after they accidentally locked themselves inside a car. The third hot car death in the country this week. In Oregon, Portland could hit 107 degrees today, 15 degrees higher than average. In Washington state, where nearly 100 people died in a record heat wave earlier this summer, nursing homes are bracing once again. Every two hours, we made sure that uh, the residents had access to water fountains that we put out for them. The scorching temperatures also helping fuel at least a dozen major fires across California. Firefighters spread thin. I'm worried. I have to say, I'm honestly, I'm worried. State regulators further tightening restrictions on water usage. In wine country, some vineyards are now cut off from using precious resources to water their crops. I've been a winemaker for 44 years. First time I've seen such a critical situation in my career. All this coming as erratic weather wreaks havoc in parts of the Midwest. At least three possible tornadoes caught on camera in Wisconsin. The outbreak damaging trees and ripping up signs. And in the east, excessive heat and severe storms bringing down this tree near Pittsburgh, killing the driver of that car. Mona Kosar Abdi. ABC News, New York. And time now is 640 and it's about 78 degrees right now. Still ahead on the morning show, tips for getting the most out of your home painting projects. And welcome back at 643. A lot of homeowners are looking at ways to freshen up their homes after spending so much time indoors this past year. And many are taking on exterior painting as a major home project. Yeah, good luck. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, RJ Marquez discusses what to look for when hiring a painter and how to know when it is time to call in a pro. Repainting the outside of your home is a great way to improve curb appeal and give your home a true facelift. But there are some things to think about when taking on a home painting project. Last year, exterior painting was one of the top requested services in the U.S. If you're one of the many homeowners thinking about taking on this project, first start by talking to a few pros about their painting process. Rolling and brushing can take longer, but spraying also uses up more paint. So it's important to understand the trade-offs before you make your decision. You should plan on having a few pros come to check your home and give you an estimate in person so the pros can take into account how many coats your walls may need, as well as nail pops, water stains, or dents they'll need to work around. Also, find out who will be doing the work and who is liable if someone gets injured during the project. Make sure they have workers' comp insurance and liability insurance so you're not stuck covering the cost if something goes wrong. Depending on where you live, the type of paint that you choose can really make a difference in how long it lasts before any fading, peeling, or chipping takes place. A premium quality paint can last up to 12 years, which would be a great amount of time not to have to think about it again. There are better paints to use in high humidity areas or for areas with a lot of direct sun exposure. So it's definitely worth doing your research before you make a decision. If your home was built before 1978, it likely has some lead paint on its walls. If so, your pro will need to be EPA lead safe certified before disturbing any walls, windowsills, or doors. The pro you hire should bring this up on their own since the fine for non-certified painters can be hefty. If they don't bring this up when providing an estimate, it might be worth finding a new pro to do the job. When choosing a paint color for your home, think about curb appeal. A very unique color could be very fun for a few years, but if you are considering selling your home anytime in the near future, 
You may want to pick something lighter or more neutral to make sure that it doesn't impact your ability to sell your home. And don't be afraid to ask for pictures of recent similar projects from pros as well as references. Call and ask former clients about their experiences with the pros, including whether they completed the project on time and on budget and how easy it was to work with them. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Good stuff, RJ. Well, good morning, everyone. We're watching the uh, trans guide right now. A few shots around show that we do, do have a few more vehicles out on the roadway now that the morning is getting going here. You can see I-35 at Randolph looking pretty busy right now. And the real big issue, though, we've spotted are some of these stalls right now. And so you can see right here, uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. A slowdown, though, that we are watching is here off US 90 westbound right at Loop 1604. You can see in those westbound lanes of US 90 traffic is moving, but at eight miles per hour right now. So not very fast. I did check the text out west website right now. Nothing reported just yet, but we know when the morning gets going, uh, this could be more of a trending issue that we start to see. But right now, as I mentioned, those that trending issue are these stalls. So I have this one reported here off I-35 at Judson Road and another one not too far from there. Uh, we talked about this throughout the morning. I-18 wheeler stalled at 281 southbound at Bassey Road. I did check trans guide and it does look like that 18 wheeler has already been cleared out of there. So that's a good sign and it doesn't look like that could be impacting that morning drive. But right now things are looking good so far. The sun looks like like it's almost peaking out there off 90 at 410 guys. Thank you, Stephen. And is that Woodlawn Lake this time? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, because there's the uh, yeah, looks like a little lighthouse right in the middle of it. And another one of those fantastic sunset pictures. Thank you very much, Mr. McClellan. Love that. And uh, not the most picturesque sunrise. Obviously, a lot of clouds hanging around here. We do have uh, temperatures that, well, we've dropped to 78 right now, but still about three above normal. 79 at Stinson and 78 Casterville. The humidity, yeah, it is definitely there. When you get these, you know, dew point temperatures, 77 up there, even mid 70s. And then you get the heat index readings up into the 80s, which is what it feels like at Stinson right now. 81 at the airport, 83 in Canyon Lake. And later on today, we are going to be seeing the heat index get up around 105 and that's one of those sort of threshold numbers where your body just and doesn't cool itself that well so you got to definitely take it easy and then emphasize these numbers are all taken in the shade you get out in the direct sun it feels 15 20 degrees hotter than that here's the uh, computer model and this is that model that kind of broad brushes things so we do have uh, a couple of showers and uh, maybe even a thunderstorm down here primarily along the coastal plain later on today roughly the same situation tomorrow and then we go into Saturday and yeah, bump up rain chances just a, a notch or so that'll be roughly it and Sunday even better chance although 30% chance of rain so not anything great on Sunday and then going into Monday and we don't really have any tight lid on the atmosphere so therefore that small rain chance will still be sticking around even going into the uh, the middle part of next week. Quick check on the tropics and Fred is still just a I say just but a tropical depression at the uh, weekend by about five miles per hour. Big rain producer, of course, though, going through Hispaniola and it will continue its trek up right along uh, the Cuban coast and then going to the Straits of Florida. It looks like a almost a direct hit on Miami and the Keys, and then it's going to be taking that path right there along the west coast of Florida, heading in toward the Panhandle, and then it still looks like it's going to be moving up in toward the uh, Tennessee Valley, and uh, that'd be by about the first of next week. Today, 90 at noon. Partly cloudy skies, a couple of these leftover clouds this morning. Watch out for a few patches of fog as well. It has gotten somewhat thicker in places in the next in the last hour. 96 high temperature. It'll feel like well up into the 100s. And tomorrow will be down a couple of degrees, a couple more showers. And that's the case into the weekend. Slightly better chance for rain Sunday and Monday. I like the 93s. I do too. <laughs> At least they're low 90s. Yes, but again, care, lots and lots of water, especially for the kids. Yes. And I was thinking again about the pets, especially during oh, the heat yeah. of the day. Shade, fresh water, preferably not in a metal bowl. No, because no. those things heat. I mean, think about your the hood of your car, yes. how quickly that heats up. Yeah, just be safe mm -hmm. uh, and smart. 650, about 78 degrees. San Antonio firefighters and other first responders can be at a sea, sometimes for hours at a time with no break in sight. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you about a local nonprofit group that wants to help in these situations. And outside with live cam, thanks for starting your day with us here on GMSA. More to come after this break.
San Antonio police say a call about a car crash quickly escalated. By the time it was over, they found four people who had been shot. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The police say that bizarre gun battle in a West Side neighborhood appears to have been triggered by that car crash. Now, they say this happened a little bit before 10 last night in the 400 block of Hazel Street. According to police, a woman in her 20s or 30s had hit a parked car. That commotion drew the car owner and neighbors out of their homes. The police say for some reason the driver then drew a gun and started shooting. A man, woman, and teenage boy all were hit. The man who was in his 50s was killed. Police say a neighbor also drew a gun and fired back, hitting and killing that driver. Of the other woman and teenage boy who were shot at last check were in critical condition. So far, the names of the people who were killed have not been released. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, everyone. Taking a look at Trans Guide here at 35 at Judson, where we have some flashing lights out there. Uh, that is because, as we told you a little bit earlier, there is a stall reported out in that area. As you can see here off 35 at Judson, we showed it to you a little bit earlier on the maps, and stalls seem to be the dominant issue at this hour. But we also spot a slowdown still here off US 90 westbound at West Loop 1604. At Loop 1604, that is traffic moving at seven miles per hour, so rather slow right now. Uh, but the inbound times are still looking pretty good if you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area in the the next few minutes, a little bit of a slowdown there in Lavernia from 87, 23 minutes at this hour. But one last look at Trans Guide. Use some caution. Check those vehicles before you hit the roadways, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, well, plenty of clouds still hanging around here this morning. We do have some fog. It's dropped to a quarter mile visibility now at Pleasanton, Stinson, a little bit of fog and Gonzales Beeville. It's also fairly thick fog. Uvalde is showing some as well. 81 is what it feels like out there. 86 is the heat index at Stinson and uh, throughout the day. 96 high temperature. It will feel like it's well up into the hundreds couple of showers going to be possible the next few days. All right, we already welcome a bunch of folks back earlier this week. Welcome back to school to SCUC ISD today. Many more to come. Yes, have a great school year and stay cool. We'll see you <laughs> back here at nine.